Well, hello, hello, hello. You are watching the No Brainers Empowering Possibilities Show. Dialogues of encouragement with fresh perspectives, an invitation to ahas, a little bit of science, a dash of behavioral psychology, and a whole lot of creative fun. So if leveling up is on your radar, my friend, you are absolutely at the right show. I'm your host, Roseanne Marsh. I'm the author of the Teen and Parent Empowerment Curriculum, Level Up, and you are listening to episode number four, Are You Asking the Right Questions? A wise man once said, the quality of your life is defined by the questions you ask. So is it safe to say that we all would love to have an empowered life? What could you do with a more empowered life? What would that even look like? What would be different about what you're doing today if that were to come about? What changes would you see in yourself? What changes in the ripple effect to your family? What would you feel like every day when you wake up? What amazing things would be drawn to you if you had this more empowered lifestyle? What would it take to make this a reality? Would you believe me if I said, it's all about asking more empowered questions. It's about asking the right questions. So let me take you back, oh, a number of years. It was a cold, rainy night. It was 9.15 at night, and the mall stores had all closed down. But one of the clothing stores that I supervised had called an emergency meeting with the supervisor. So there I was waiting for the staff to come and assemble to hear, you know, who knows what was gonna come out of my mouth. I did have a plan though. This was a struggling store and sales were down. The morale was low, but I knew I had a gift to give them that night. If they would accept it, that could literally change the trajectory of that store. I had them sit cross-legged on the floor in like an intimate little circle. And then I gave them a pen, but I didn't give them any paper. And I leaned forward to say my first words a little quiet, as if I were divulging a secret and I didn't want the rest of them all to hear. But I said to them, if I came back to this store and I pulled you in the back room and I said, Joe, you have been blowing away your cells. And so I went to bat for you and guess what? I got a raise for you. What would you do with the extra money from your raise? Well, there were some literally stud looked on their faces like, what, is this a trick question? I asked again, what would you do with the money from a raise? And I heard this sheepish little question like, um, how much would the raise be? And I responded, what could you do with a bigger paycheck? Now there was a visible shift in their countenance and uh, the demeanor, you could actually see their shoulders relax. There was like an excited buzzing. And then we went around and each one of them told us what they would do with a bigger paycheck. Now I could have just asked them, would you benefit from a bigger paycheck? And what would I have gotten? I would have gotten like a yes or a no. <laughs> I can't believe I'd get a no. But all of a sudden, that manager was able to look around at the faces and see on the faces and feel from each one of her associates what was important to them. Because now they divulge what they would do with a bigger paycheck, with a raise. You see, I was there that evening for this meeting with this particular staff to help jumpstart a very struggling store. I was there to breathe confidence into the teens and the adults that were seated around the circle. And we were on chairs, we were in this intimate little meeting. And I wanted to give to them something that had been so powerful, that had been given to me years prior. And I armed them that night with a pen. And I told them I was there to step them into the league of power sellers with just a few things that they were gonna write on their hand. So are you curious to know what I told them to write on their hand? I told them to write what, which, how, and tell me. I'll repeat it again. What, which, 
how and tell me. So each one of them wrote that on the palm of their hands. And then we proceeded to talk about the power of open-ended questions. And that, of course, is a question that you ask that cannot be answered by yes or no or just one little quick answer. And we emphasize that if we didn't get our customers talking, we couldn't find the solutions that we knew were there for them in the store. The first words, what, which, how, and tell me. If, if they started a sentence with one of those four different words or phrases, or if they started a sentence with one of those four, then it would start a conversation with the customer and they'd be able to get more information. Of course, they'd have to start way before the fitting room, just in the greeting. Tell me what you're looking for today. What brings you guys in here today? If they started a question with any of those fours, they would open up conversation with the customers that were coming in the store and they could start helping them find right away the things they needed. The key to this though, was to keep the sales process going. And this is where the magic of these words would happen when they put them back in the fitting room is they had to get back in time to be able to get the feedback so they could correct if they needed something. My other tip to my stores was always keep them naked. Now, what I mean by that, I meant get back there before they already have their clothes back on. Because when somebody gets dressed and comes out of the fitting room, they're not going to go back in and undress again. So you got to catch them while they're in the act of trying and use one of those questions to get the conversation open and dialogue happening. So they were to ask, listen, and react. So they were to ask, listen, and react. For example, what are some of the things that they could have asked? Well, what are the sweaters fitting like? Where will you be wearing this? What tops will you be wearing with it? Which of the bottoms fit the best? What do you like about the dress? What sizes do you need me to exchange for you? Which of the jeans fit the best? Oh, none of them fit? Let me grab different sizes. I've got a different style too that's a little bit looser in the hip. And then they grab a shirt on the way back and they've got new things for them to try on and suggestive selling some other things or suggestive showing all to get information while they were naked and then react. Go grab new styles, go get a shirt, get it something that coordinates, a coat, a jacket, shoes, when it's appropriate. So then at the cash wrap, they could have accessory pulled out or different things that can make this outfit complete because they know their store, they know the merchandise, they're excited about it and they could invite the customer to see what the options are. So we role played in the fitting room with our responses. We were running back and forth. We were laughing, we were having fun. We gave each other feedback and help. And all of a sudden, those associates had been struggling to sell, were looking on their hand and using questions and stumbling and then asking better ones. And then we ended the night with high fives. And the associates were laughing as they left the store. They were laughing the store and they were more empowered. Using questions keeps the selling process going. Using questions kept conversations from getting stuck. Using questions created movement and direction and it gave a tool to those that were just learning the art of selling a better foundation so that they could then springboard into making it more their flavor of conversation their flavor of approach, something very unique to them. And I get even a little bit emotional thinking about it, but my district won two years in a row, top increase in units per transaction, or in other words, we were suggestive selling more items. We were suggested selling a higher increase over our prior years, which were actually pretty good because the managers knew the power of questions and those associates knew the power of questions and they were asking them, they were listening for information and they were reacting. So using questions certainly changed the skills of those who grabbed onto that tool of conversation, but really all of us have that tool already built inside of us. Questions are basic, but sometimes we almost overlook the power of them. 
over the past few years of learning the power of questions. I've learned the questions we ask ourselves and others do shape our lives. So where do we learn how to ask questions? Well, we go to the experts, right? <laughs> Kids. Spend some time with a young kid who's trying to discover their world and you will see what curiosity is all about, right? How they express it. And it's expressed through questioning, of course. And often it's relentless and it goes on and on and on. But here's the beauty about little kids. They live in the present. That's all they know. And as we grow older, we seem to compress present to here because we are so used to living in the past and or living in the future. We act in the present moment. And that's the only place we can act, right? We only have right now where we can act or react. But when our thoughts are dwelling on the past, we can't react in the present. Or if it's dwelling on the what ifs of the future, we can't react in the present. So in the past could be guilt or regret or resentment, or the future can be the worry, the anxiety. Don't they say that depression is worrying about the past and anxiety is about worrying about the future? So when we learn to be like a little kid and be more present and more alive and curious about everything, we start to see things in a very different way and, and solutions we didn't even know could be ours start to present themselves. So is there a power in questions? Well, yeah, because questions create change. Powerful questions create change. Giving people facts and information is really helpful and it's nice and we can read a brochure of all this different information, but if it has a question on there that I can assimilate and personalize, I now learn more about that product than if it's just a regurgitation of facts. But questions can create transformation, they can inspire innovation, and that can result in true change. Questions are powerful because they help us focus. And when we focus our thinking, we can get to some real breakthrough answers. So let's step into my laboratory and try something, should we? I want you to answer this question. What does a zebra look like? Okay, you probably conjured a visual in your head of a black and white mammal with four legs, right? Well, when we ask a question, it's as if our entire brain is hijacked and the mind goes into solution finding mode. It has to answer a question when it's given a question. It's just how it's hardwired. Our brains are almost helpless to avoid thinking about an answer until we conscientiously tell it not to, not to answer that question. When someone is asked a question, their thoughts immediately are turned to trying to provide an answer. It's a natural reaction for us to turn to solution mode. And the brain is unconsciously prompted to do have this mental image up here so it can start help finding the answers. So when we're asked a question, the whole brain is stimulated and serotonin is released. And what the serotonin does, it causes the brain to relax and it makes it more easy for it to find answers and to develop solutions. So what can questions do for us? Three different things, focus, empowerment, and change. I invited a couple of my friends today to give some of their perspective too on this. So focus, questions shape our focus and it affects the meaning that we give to everything. And so how we think, what we think and what we do. With anything, there are so many different things that we can focus on, but focusing really helps us dial in on something and awakens our awareness. At any given moment, we're focusing on something, we're questioning ourselves, and if we don't have awareness of what we are questioning or how we are questioning, then we could be asking the wrong questions such as, what's wrong with me? Why can't I ever find the solutions to that? Why can't my kids ever behave? When we ask the brain question, 
it has to answer. So it will go to what you have asked it to focus on. So when you ask it, why can't I fill in the blank? It'll give you an answer, but it may not be an empowering answer because it's going to answer the question that you asked. So to get better control out of our thoughts, to get better answers, we have to ask better questions. So here's my friend and coach Stacy Harmer with some of her wisdom. Hi there. I think questions are a great way to get our brains focused on the direction that we want to go in our life. Sometimes we're just unconsciously going through the motions. And when we start asking questions, it's like turning on a light bulb and getting our brain able to start working. I know as a coach, one of my favorite questions simply is why? Why? <laughs> and sometimes even saying that steps, you step back and like, oh, why am I doing that? Or, or what am I making that mean um, about myself? Or um, so what? <laughs> you know, continually just kind of peeling back the layers to go a layer deeper. I know also um, sometimes when we put up the, the statement, I don't know, it just completely shuts us down. Okay, our mind. And so a question I like is, well, if you did know, what would you do in this situation? Because sometimes I don't know, it's just kind of a habit. I don't know what to do here or there. Well, if you did know, because we really do know, but sometimes we just kind of have to wake up our brains that we do know and get give our brains permission to start like coming up with answers. So focus is the first thing it gives us. Empowerment is the second thing. When you ask great questions, we empower ourselves. Instead of why can't I, we ask, how can I? And then the brain sends out there, okay, let me find all the ways that we can. Empowerment is we are giving the brain permission to find all the good things, all the strong things, all the capable things that are, we have about us. One of the questions might look like, what time of life have you been the happiest? When we tap into a moment in time, and recreate it, ask, how does that feel? What does it look like? What does it smell like? What is the touch like? Then we start bringing to life, to our mind, the open possibility of, oh, let's look at the amazing things in our life. Let's look at the strong things in our life. Years ago, I heard Tony Robbins speak on his power of questions. In fact, he developed an entire curriculum just around tough questions that he had to ask himself after a partner embezzled a ton, a ton of money. Isn't it funny that things that happen in our life that become a catalyst for good. But here are five questions that he asks all the time that I love. If you don't mind, I'd love to share them with you. The first one is, what are you really most happy about in your life? And in any of these questions, you might say, well, I don't know if I'm really happy, but if you could be happy, what would you be the most happy about? And then what makes you happy? And how does that make you feel? And what else makes you happy? So you see how you can extrapolate out every one of these questions. So that's number one. Number two would be, what are you really excited about? And how does that make you feel? So it's important that we feel these things because when we feel, it actually changes the hormones that are released into our body. So when we bring up that connection of the heart and the mind, we are changing the chemical cocktail in our body. His third question he asks is, what are you really grateful for in your life? And how does that make you feel? You sit in that gratitude. The fourth question is, what, have you, what are you really proud of right now? And how does that make you feel? And the fifth one, who do you really love and who really loves you? And how does that make you feel? When we ask a question, the brain goes on that hunt, right? But when we start engaging that brain and that heart together and start bringing up those feelings, we're actually writing new synaptic bundles, new neural connections are happening in our body. When we engage the feeling piece, it's powerful. 
And while these are amazing questions that he asks, you can get your own personalized questions through pondering and meditation. My friend Lisa Gray shares her recent discovery. And so I was doing some journaling last night and from my writing, I came out with this incredible question, or at least I thought it was incredible. And I wanted to share it with you. Um, I was journaling along the words about creating and using intention in what I want to create. And the word, or the question that popped up in my writing process was, what can I take from this situation that I'm in, that I'm struggling in, and how can I apply it to what I want to create? And you can rephrase that any way you want that applies to your own situation. But it's just along the lines of how can I learn or what is it that this is teaching me and how is it going to help me or benefit me or aid me in the process of creating, of creation, whatever it is I want to create in my life. So questions can bring focus, they can bring empowerment, and they can bring change. They can be a catalyst for change. Behind any change are better questions. Those that succeed in life are those that when they go through something really difficult in their life, they ask more empowering questions. When they want to get more out of themselves, they ask more empowering questions. When they hit a roadblock, they ask more empowering questions. And yes, we can ask ourselves empowering questions, but how many of you have had a question posed to you from someone else that ended up being life-changing or ended up being a change you needed to even look at? How many of you have literally had a door opened up that gave you a new perspective, a new option, a new opportunity that before then, you had never you had never been able to extrapolate well i've had many powerful questions given to me or asked of others that really made a difference in my life and if you're okay i'd like to be just a little bit vulnerable and share with you two that were shared with me that were game changers for me one was how long do you want to tolerate this? Now, you can also take that into your life. Is there something that you should be asking? How long do you want to tolerate this? That statement actually was the catalyst for me for giving myself permission to dissolve a marriage that was very physically and mentally abusive. I wasn't married very long before I realized that mental health was not my wheelhouse and I could not help this person heal nor could I deal with what felt very irrational to me. And how grateful I was for a therapist who posed the question, not to push me anywhere and not to make a decision for me, but to allow me to see that I had a choice. So very grateful for that question that day. How long do you want to tolerate this? Another time, another era in my life, a question was posed to me, what will happen if you release your control over that? This was from a friend and they allowed me to see, to start looking at possibilities of outcomes and weighing the price I had of holding so tight to something that I wanted to control or felt I desperately needed to control. And I actually decided to let go of the leash and that part of my world did not fall apart. And each one of you can probably think, yeah, I remember that question that was given to me. And ah, I didn't really like it, but it made me think. And I ultimately made a change from it. Or I'm still thinking on that. My friend Arlene Austin was so kind to be able to share some of her wisdom. Asking of questions. Because certainly they are, they can be very poignant and very thoughtful. And at times actually uh, have, have huge impacts on, on our lives as we're willing and ready to spend time searching and pondering those questions. And more than that, 
go really deeply in in inside and be very authentic with um with what we're feeling with the questions that were asked there are have been significant times in my life when i've been going through very hard things that hard questions have been asked and in those moments of time those those questions have had had have had a huge impact on changing my life i would say that there i may not have wanted to hear the answers um that i you know that came forth but nonetheless they were significant other times questions have been posed that uh years later i've reflected on and uh and again found them very poignant in my learning process if we don't have questions i wonder if we ever really, really learn what's going on inside of us and what we need to do to progress and grow. So get out your pen and I want you to write these things on your hand. What, which, how, and tell me. Or write it on your paper and think of some of the questions that you would have that would head you in the right direction. Which questions would help you focus? Which ones would help empower you? Which ones would create a catalyst for change? And I love also adding on to the end, what questions should I ask that will be my catalyst for change and help me enjoy life in the meantime? So always adding in that piece of, and help me learn and increase my knowledge so it doesn't have to be this heavy question without a light at the end of the tunnel. What, which, how, and tell me. And then I want us to ask those questions. Listen for the responses that come up from your body, from your journey, from what you hear, and then react. Do something, nothing happens until we actually do something. I love reading scriptures. They bring such a balm to me. And I love Matthew 7, 7. And it says, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened unto you. Well, our brains are already set up for that, right? If we ask the right question, it goes out there and seeks for it. And it is open to us. This scripture could very well have been written for an indication that our brains have most of the answers that we need. Our mind can do that for us. No solutions are found from unasked questions. So what are the questions that are gonna unlock your destiny? The simple act of asking questions is like planting a seed. So we need to decide what seeds are we planting in our brain? What questions are we asking? And better yet, why haven't we been asking a ton of questions? Let's get curious, just like those little kids. Be in the present moment and ask all these glorious open-ended questions. What do we have to lose? And what do we have to gain? If you're interested in learning more about what you experienced today, you can go to nobrainers.com. So thank you for sharing this half hour. And remember that tools don't need to be complicated or hard. Sometimes they're just no brainers. Thanks for spending this time with me. And remember, we're all creators. So my invitation to you this week is let's go out and create those amazing questions. Take care. <laughs>